Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee, back in my shed at last. I've had a very active summer, but I know that people have been waiting for our tool tests. And so now I'm back in looking at the Festool TS55. Now this is a rail saw or a plunge saw, as some people call it. And Festool were the people to invent this. They were the first ones out with one of these. And this one is a 110 volt, which is something that we use in the UK. The rest of the world don't seem to be cursed with 110, but for safety reasons, we tend to go for 110 on building sites and uh, 240 when we're working in people's houses. But the trouble with a 110 is you've got to lug that great transformer around. But that's life. That's the way it is in the UK with our health and safety. So that's what we've got. So they've sent us the 110. We're going to take this out on site which is why we needed that voltage and anybody who doesn't know Festool might be thinking well they're expensive what's all the fuss about why do people salivate over them if you like well it is a bit of an eclectic club people join it they start building up the Festool at one time I used to think it was all about the boxes people just like those stacking cases and then people copied them with the stacking cases and Festool kind of just kept moving ahead of the game they keep coming out with better versions of this, this plunge saw. And if you've not had a plunge saw, you're thinking about buying one. A lot of people use these out on site as a general purpose saw. And I think it's a bit of a shame because they're an expensive bit of kit to use like that. And I think you can go and buy yourself a, an ordinary circular saw for around about 100 quid for those rough jobs when you might go through a few nails and all the rest of it. But some people just have the one saw out in sight, use it for everything. But where it really comes into its own for me is when you couple it up with a rail because the rail obviously keeps it guided perfectly. It gives you a really straight cut, which is always a good thing. But also the idea of the rail is that on this edge here, you have a kind of sacrificial bit of rubber. Now when you first mount your saw on the rail and you do your first cut, that blade is so close to that rubber that as you plunge down, it will cut the rubber. So the first thing you have to do, is set your saw up, go along the whole rail and just cut it. And you'll see just a tiny, tiny bit of rubber coming in. That means that your saw is now matched to that rail. So every time you cut after that, that blade is cutting right down beside the rubber. Now you might wonder what the advantage of that is. The advantage is that you won't get any breakout, which is the lift you get from the blade. And if you're going along a laminate worktop or something like that, that breakout produces a very fine sort of ragged edge that you can sometimes only see when you put your glasses or magnifying glass on it, but it is there, which is unacceptable. So when you use the saw on the rail, it holds that edge down and stops it flicking out and breaking out. And obviously, if you're cutting the bottom off some very expensive oak doors or something like that, you don't want that break out. So it's a great idea, and it's something that's taken off. As I said, Festival started it. Everybody's copied it. Every power tool manufacturer worth their salt has got a rail saw. Now, I say that, actually. You know who hasn't? Milwaukee. But watch his space, probably even by the time we get this review out on YouTube, Milwaukee will have their rail saw out, but they've been hanging about. So I don't know, maybe they're thinking of something really special. Maybe they're trying to really steal a march over the competition by coming up with some features that the other ones haven't got. But I'm pretty excited about that. I want to see that Milwaukee. I want to keep asking them when it's going to be ready. And they say soon, soon, soon. So as soon as it does come, we'll be reviewing it. But for now, we're going to start with the Festool, which is the classic tool. Now, anyone who knows Festool knows that every single place where they've got this color, this green, it means there's a function. So let's just go through the functions very quickly. We're going to take this out on site. We're going to use it. But just for now, I want to do this unboxing, if you like, go through the features, and then you can put your feedback at the bottom of this video and when we go out and test it, you can ask us questions, you can suggest things that we can do with this saw, and then we build up a kind of a two-way test, if you like. Give us your feedback. If you've got one of these saws, you love it, you hate it, you're indifferent, let us know. So in no particular order, I'm gonna run through what the features of this saw are. It's fitted on the rail now, but as you can see, there's a little bit of play 
on that saw as it fits on the rail and if you want to do a real precision job you need to get rid of that play and the way you get rid of that play is you twist around the little levers sorry the little knobs at the front and the back and as you do that that turns a little cam and it turns it against the rail so that it's like a fine tuning if you like now as you see when I go along now it's actually there's no play in that but you can see that's a little bit stiff so we just turn those back slightly and there's still no play no discernible play there but now the saw is running smoothly so that's the first thing you do if you're using the saw on the angle there is a tendency sometimes for the saw to lift out of there so you can actually on some models lock that saw under the rail to stop it tipping out but if you're experienced and you know what you're doing then that should be fine and just keep your hands on it and it'll be fine the next thing we've got is the angle cut which allows us to adjust the saw we have to do one at the front and one at the back and that will give us our angles now we can go to 45 we can actually go past the 45 mark i can't do it there i have to move it off the bench so you can see but we can actually go past the 45 mark to undercut slightly which is tremendous sometimes that you want to do that but in order to do that we just need to pull the little knob at the back and you can see that it's just got that tendency to slip off the rail when it goes to that but if we pull that knob at the back it will allow us to go past the 45 mark and similarly when we go the other way we can go down to naught degrees and again by pulling the knob we can actually go past that so we're on a minus cut we're on an undercut if you like and that will just mean that the saw is tilted very very slightly away from the rail and giving us that slightly off the vertical cut so a very good little feature comes in handy when you're working on old buildings i'll take that off the rail so you can see what i'm talking about that's the button at the back that we need to pull out in order to go past our our point and then when we go back it, you can see automatically clicks back in so you know that you're back to the settings now here is our depth stop and you can see we've got two stages of depth stop here and this is in metric if you're imperial if you're american you can actually get a sticker it goes over the top here to give you the old-fashioned inches but you know let's get with it metrics fine and what we've got here we've got two gauges so if we were looking to cut for 30 millimeters for example and we set that down on the 30 millimeters mark if we didn't have that saw on the rail that would cut to 30 millimeters depth absolutely spot on perfectly but if we got the rail we're only going to get 25 millimeters out of it so if we we're cutting with the rail and we want that depth of cut there then what we've got to do is use that mark you see where it's got the fs that is for use on the rail and if you want to do a bit of fine tuning you can just turn that knob there and that will allow you to go down in fractions of a millimeter so you can get really precise if you want to just go through and you want to just touch the other side the laminate this will allow you to do it but in the normal sense we just would be quite happy to just wind it up and down i always do a couple of test cuts make sure that that's fine that's exactly where you want it before you start your thing saves a bit of embarrassment that way so we just do that up tightly again because we're in 90 degrees up the top we've got a knob here which is actually to lock the blade so if we want to change the blade it's very easy to change the blade we just lock it in position to stop it turning and that will allow us see that to lock the blade there that will allow us to get the spanner in there whip that blade out we don't need to remove the housing and then we can put in another blade it's very important by the way that you choose the right blade i would stick with the festool blade because if you go get a different width of blade you'll find that that cut you've done on that rubber along the front won't necessarily be right so 
if you're gonna go for a blade, stick with the blade. This is the riving knife, and the riving knife, if you look, comes down before the blade, which is fantastic. The reason that's fantastic is because if you've got the saw on the rail and you're having to move along, you're cutting something very, very long and you just want to make sure that that is lined up on the cut. Where you've already cut, you can just plunge it down and that riving knife will sit in the cut. I can't see it from here, but I'm sure it's there. So there's the riving knife. So if that's in the cut that you've already done, you can line the other end of the rail up with where you're continuing and that way you can continue all the way along a very long piece. Of course the other way that you can do it is you can get longer guide rails. You can also join two guide rails together which is what I do quite a lot by putting the inserts in the end there and just clamping those up so that you can continue if you wanted to all the way along. Here's another thing which is worth remembering. This is a Makita guide rail for a Makita plunge saw and apart from the fact that a bit of plastic is coming off that needs gluing back down again, it's identical. I would suggest that they come out of exactly the same factory and they are fully compatible. Most plunge saws and most guide rails are compatible. The one that I found that isn't compatible is the DeWalt. They seem to have their own pattern of guide rail and stick with it but if not then you can just borrow guide rails or grab guide rails from anywhere join them together and there's no problem at all with that so we've got the usual unlock the blade there and we've got the usual safety catch on there so we can't start it up accidentally we've got a depth stop there as we move around we've got what they call the plug it lead which is a great thing on Festool it's actually just like a kettle lead and it allows you to plug your tools in. So if you had one lead and you had four different Festool tools, you can just swap over and plug those in and it means that you can change your cord over without having to run a new cord all the way to the extension. So a useful little thing if you're working on the bench. I won't put that back now because it will be a fiddle. Incidentally, I don't know whether that 240 is different to that 110 or not or whether you could actually accidentally plug a 240 lead into a 110 machine I'll check that out and come back to you on that that would be something worth looking at but as you can see you can go around there's your dust extraction fairly standard on tools now and here we've got speed control so we can set our maximum speed and in the Festool instructions they tell you about recommended speeds for different materials and obviously with some materials you want to avoid burning but the idea of having a plunge saw is that you can get down and cut letter boxes out of things if you wanted to start midway and to help you start midway we've got a window here and we can see where the blade comes down there's even a mark to tell us the full extent of the blade so if I put that to the front there and I put that depth stop down there you'll be able to see that as that blade plunges down you can see the exact stop of it so you can just lean over and perfectly safely work out exactly where the front edge of that blade's coming if you're trying to cut an aperture out of something maybe a letterbox for a door or something like that so a great little feature there's also a splinter guard that goes on there so that holds the material down and stops it from breaking out on the bottom or the top which is another useful little thing you'd only use that if you're working on delicate materials but that's it that's it I've given you a run through probably a bit wordy but that's me <laughs> get paid by the word uh, I'm gonna take it out on site I'm gonna shut up give it some jobs to do show a few of my mates see what they think of it and get back to you with part two of this test but as I say while we're testing it we want you to be commenting on this video get your comments out there get your suggestions out there anything you want to see any questions you've got fire them in there and then in part two of this video we better answer some of those questions. So I'm Roger Bisbee, thanks very much for watching. Come back soon and don't forget to subscribe because that way you can keep up to date with everything we're doing. And I must just mention one other thing, our website. Give that a look because we've done loads and loads of work on it. It's growing like crazy. It's not all about videos. We've got new products on there. We've got lots of industry news, how-tos and other stuff, plus competitions. You could win a power tool. So have a look at the website and subscribe to the channel.